quantum computing looked like a snail's race for the past year, but suddenly a lot has happened at once. It seems like commercially relevant quantum computers might be here faster than expected within just a few years. And they're becoming dangerous faster than expected. Let's have a look. The first major news of the week is that IBM has unveiled a new plan to build a commercially interesting quantum computer from superconducting circuits. In the past years, they developed a new error correcting algorithm that they say drastically reduces the number of physical qubits needed for error correction. You see, qubits make errors. So what one does is one creates a redundancy with more qubits and by help of this, one can correct the errors. That way, one can combine many physical qubits to one logical error-free qubit. But this means one needs a huge amount of physical qubits to build a useful quantum computer. IBM now writes that their improvement cuts the required overhead by approximately 90%, which is huge. With this, they want to be able to deliver 200 logical, so fully error-corrected qubits by 2029. And a few years later, they want to have 2,000 logical qubits. This would be well in the territory of commercially relevant applications, which have been estimated to become feasible at about 150 logical qubits. IBM still faces the problem of having to scale up their platform from currently a few hundred physical qubits to a few hundred thousand, and the press release says nothing about how they want to get this done. However, their goal has come 90% closer. The company Psi Quantum also has plans to build a commercially interesting quantum computer. However, they use photonic qubits, which have been far less studied and are less understood than IBM's approach. Now add to this the next big quantum computing news that comes from a preprint that recently appeared on the archive. The author Greg Gidney of Google Quantum AI in Santa Barbara argues that quantum computers will be able to break RSA encryption much earlier than anticipated. Breaking this encryption is one of the key applications for quantum computers. It's one of those tasks where the devices should theoretically be able to dramatically outperform conventional computers. Up until now, we assumed that RSA breaking would only become possible after other applications, for example, in quantum chemistry, become feasible. That is, we'd at least have ample warning. But if the new paper's right, that won't be the case. This is because the author of the new paper says that quantum Quantum computers with under 1 million noisy, so not fully error-corrected qubits, could already factor 2048-bit RSA in roughly a week. This is a significant reduction in time compared to earlier estimates. Indeed, the same researcher estimated in 2019 that the task would take eight hours with 20 million physical qubits. It's not that the earlier estimate was wrong, it's just that since then, then algorithmic improvements have much reduced the computational burden. And that doesn't take into account the IBM error correction improvement. If these estimates are both correct, then we'll see RSA broken before 2029. That quantum computers might be able to break RSA is a big headache because it's been used to encrypt digital data for decades, and that includes a lot of confidential high-stakes information. While the world is about to switch to encryption protocols that can't be broken with quantum computers, the so-called post-quantum cryptography, it's highly likely that intelligence organizations are in possession of sensitive data which they currently can't read. All that will become readable if they have a big enough quantum computer. The political consequences could be dramatic. And the third quantum computing breakthrough I have this week is that researchers from the University of Oxford report a new world record in the quality of their qubits. It's a stunning one error in 6.6 seven million operations. The qubit in question was a trapped iron, so it's yet another different technology from that of IBM and Psi Quantum. But this too serves to show that the technology is developing rapidly.
In other news, the CEO of the quantum computing firm IonQ, who has been highly praising his company for months, sold all his stocks. Personally, I'm still skeptical we'll see useful quantum computers in the coming decade, because I suspect that the more qubits they'll try to combine, the more they'll push the system into a chaotic range that will become difficult to control. When will quantum computers finally become useful? We need a quantum computer to find out. So they told you that no one understands quantum physics. I think that's wrong. It's totally understandable. You can give it a try yourself with my quantum course on Brilliant. My course will help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.